I am very grateful you have decided to see me, sir. Not at all, ma'am. Would you care for some tea, perhaps? No, sir, I have not come for tea. I have come to secure my husband's release from that dreadful place. Ma'am, we must wait. Our hope is to mollify the public toward him. There would be no need to mollify the public, but for your proclamation that my husband was an accessory to the assassination of President Lincoln. I am sure that whatever others believed, you did not credit it, sir. Indeed not, ma'am. Indeed not. But at present, I am in the hands of wildly excited people. I must take such measures as would show that I'm at least willing to sift the facts. You owe my husband a retraction as public as your mistake then. There was never even the slightest intercourse between John Wilkes Booth and my husband. Can the same be said for Colonel Dahlgren and Abraham Lincoln in the matter of the attempt upon my husband during his presidency? I am laboring under the enmity of many in both houses of Congress. If they could find anything upon which to hinge an impeachment, they would degrade me accordingly. If I could offer a retraction, I would, but I cannot. Has your husband thought of requesting a pardon? He has not. That would be tantamount to a confession for him. The South is guilty of nothing. From what would he ask pardon? I have never believed that your husband was involved in Lincoln's murder. I was compelled by Stanton and Holt to issue that proclamation. They assured me that they had conclusive evidence of complicity. You must understand, my own position was so insecure and popular excitement so great at the time that I fell into their wishes. Very well then, let us see what we can do. I have been counseled not to ask for a parole. I merely seek, therefore, to establish my family group at the Fortress Monroe. I urge the range of the fort for my husband that he may be allowed to move about freely. Go on. I'm listening. I also propose the removal of General Miles. I argue most emphatically that he does not respect the person or the feelings of Jefferson Davis. I have a letter from Dr. Cooper that I may use in this regard. He does say that your husband is growing weaker by the day, though he does everything he can to sustain him. If I may quote him, he says he must have mental and bodily rest and exercise at will. And he says also that he must have the freedom of the fort with permission to remain with his family. I think that is very well spoken, sir. You know, General Miles has intimated to me that you've had quite an effect on him since your arrival at the fort. I can quote him directly, I think. Let me see. Ah, since Mrs. Davis's appearance at this place, there has been a determined effort that, as he could not be a hero, to make a martyr of him. Tell me, if you can, President Johnson, the exact and definite difference between the two. Good day, President Johnson.